Now that you've made a hypothesis, it's time to set up your experiment to put your predictions to the test and see what actually happens. We want you to make your clay caterpillars and then place them on the two different plant species that you chose. Then you can come back in a few days and see what happens to them and where the birds attacked them the most. When scientists set up experiments, they have to be really careful to make sure that they aren't accidentally influencing the results one way or the other. We can do this with three important ideas called randomization, replication, and control. It will be up to you to make sure you are incorporating these ideas into the setup of your experiment. One of the ways we can protect against this impacting our data is through something called replication. With replication, we collect data lots of times, not just once. The more caterpillars we make and place on the more individual plants, the better chance we have of seeing a real difference between the two species. In science, we usually try to have seven to 10 replicates. The more, the better. In this case, that would mean having 10 caterpillars on one plant species and 10 caterpillars on the other plant species. And ideally, if you can, you'll want these caterpillars to be spread out over several plants of each species. The next things we always need to think about as scientists when we're setting up an experiment is randomization. Sometimes when you're setting up an experiment, you can affect your results without even knowing it. For example, if I put all the caterpillars for one plant species on one side of the garden and the caterpillars for the other species on the other side, there might be differences from one side of the garden to the next that might impact how the birds attack caterpillars. For example, maybe one side is sunnier than the other. Instead, try to find individuals of both types of plants that you're comparing throughout your garden or throughout your school and place your caterpillars on plants spaced more randomly throughout the area. The very last thing that we need to consider is control. These are the things that we want to keep exactly the same between all of our plants so that the only thing that's different between them is the type of plant. So for example, you want to make the clay caterpillars all the same size, place the same number of caterpillars on each individual plant, and place them in the same way each time. So don't put the caterpillars up high on one plant species and down low on another one, because that could affect our results. Here's how I set up my experiment at Crystal Cove. I have 10 clay caterpillars and I want to compare how they get eaten on plants with small leaves like buckwheat and plants with big leaves like California bush sunflower. So I have a couple individual buckwheat plants and two bush sunflower plants in the area around me. So I'm going to put five caterpillars on each of those. You can spread your caterpillars out even more if you have more plants in your garden for your study. I place the five caterpillars randomly on the plants, so some are down high on the higher leaves, some down low near the base. The plants here are about the same size, and the caterpillars are the same size too. So go ahead and move on to the next slide and work with your research team to write a plan in your science journal for how you will set up your experiment.